Welcome to Eternity Church, everyone. It's fabulous having you joining us again. We're going to worship the Lord together. Please do remember the big news, and you'll hear it again in church news today, that we are back in the building next week for Easter service. And then again, we start again in May, May the 21st. And so please get those days in your diary. It's going to be amazing. We've got Easter service, then closed again, then our homecoming is happening. 21st of May. Come on, let's worship the Lord together.
Sinai, it's Michael here. Hope you all had a great week and today I'm going to be giving you guys the church news. So first up, connect groups. Connect groups are still happening every single week. If you don't know what a connect group is, it's basically where you get into smaller groups and you just delve into the word together on a deeper level. Um, socialize with each other from church. And uh, yeah, so if you want to get involved in one, you don't know how to, then please email alphacapoldo at weareternity.com and he'll be able to sort you one based on your location. Uh, secondly, Wednesday Zoom prayers are still happening every single week. If you want to get involved again, the online ID will be on the screen right now. It's a great time to just, yet yeah, again, socialise and pray about big topics um, that you want God to come through with. Uh, big news now, um, on the 4th of April we're going to be meeting in church on Easter Sunday. Um, we're going to just get together, have a great time. Obviously keep the social distancing rules, but yeah, it'll be amazing. So get the word out, put the date in your diaries and yeah, we're going to have a great time together. Um, and also online services will be continuing until the 29th of May where we will finally be able to come back in church in the building and meet as a collective. It's uh, great times, um, you know, we'll finally be able to get to the recovery process and get back in the church and seeing all you guys again. So yet again, um, please put that in your date and hopefully we'll see each other very, very soon. Um, but even after we return to church, online services will still be going on for people who can't make it. Uh, so yeah, so thank you guys for watching uh, Church News. Stay safe. Hope to see you all on the 4th of April and now I'm going to hand over. Have a good week guys. Right now we're going to receive our tithes and offerings and once again I thank you for your generosity over this last year. We've, it's been a year that we've been doing this and actually exactly a year this week since we did our first online service, a full online service. And so we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. If you're not part of Eternity Church, please don't feel compelled to give. You're more than welcome to do so if you'd like to bless the work that is happening here, our missions work, our outreach, our work through Compassion International, supporting children in a village in Ethiopia, various other places as well. You're more than welcome to give. The details for giving are on the screen. Let's give generously. Let's bless the house of God and let's receive our tithes and offerings. Well, thank you so much for, for your giving and for um, the fact that we're actually coming back into this building. I, you know, I, I'm really excited about that. And thanks for all, the, all of you that joined in with our Hangout that happened after last week's service. Lots of you came online um, to our Zoom call Hangout and we chatted about um, coming back to church. And it's something we're taking very seriously. We're operating with full COVID precautions and everything is penciled in. In other words, everything could change and so it's all set in jelly at the moment it's not set in concrete things can move things can change right we're getting into the word of god and i'm giving you part six today of my series called take me back and i'll be concluding this series next week sunday right here at the church also online next week i'll be concluding it with my easter message today i've entitled it take me back to the fire Take me back to the fire. Come on, let's say our declaration. I declare today that I'm ready to hear from God. I'm tuning my heart into his word. I believe that Jesus is Lord, that his promises are true, and that his word lasts forever. I believe that what I hear today could change my life because my best days are yet to come in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, right now, we just surrender ourselves to you and we receive this ministry from your word, trusting and knowing and believing that you can do great things with the seed that is going to be sown into our hearts right now in Jesus' name. Take me back to the fire. People, as life unfolds, we take many paths, we make many choices, um, we say many things, we live through many situations, we live through crises, we go through difficulties. And in this series, I have sought to bring us back to the bedrock of everything that we believe in. We've looked at going back to our first love, going back to the depths of our relationship with God and calling out deep, calling unto deep and so forth. And various other themes that we have looked at, getting back to our knees 
getting back to the things that we might have left behind because we, we drifted maybe a little bit. But sometimes we've got to take stock of our lives and say, what is the bedrock of what I'm believing in? As we start to slowly emerge from a worldwide pandemic, we have had cause to gather around a common need, a common crisis, a common goal, much like people would gather around a fire. And when, we ga when people gather around a fire, it's to receive a common warmth that is being given from that fire. And sometimes we start to look to other places to give us that fire. God is challenging your heart right now and He's saying to you, where have you been looking for? For your fire where have you been looking for your heat where have you been looking for sustenance where have you been turning to for peace of mind God is calling you back to that fire as people would gather around a fire and warm themselves and fire has so many purposes it can be a purging fire it can be a fire that that causes an engine to, to work it can be a fire that cooks food it can be so many different things. But God is saying, I need you to gather around the fire of my word. I need you to gather around the fire of my spirit that is still burning as it has been ever since the days of Pentecost. May we go back always to what God wants of us. And I'm reminded of a night in Jerusalem when Jesus had been arrested. He had been betrayed. He had been set up by one of his own. And he was approaching the cross, which waited just a few hours away. He was going through a sham of a trial. It was an absolutely terrible trial. That, that the, the, the court case, everything. There were, there were false witnesses. All sorts of things were coming against him. He was arrested and his disciples had scattered, but Peter mingled with a crowd of others, or probably at a loose end and in the dark, small hours of the morning. Remember, all of this happened just after midnight. And there, we, there would have been in the small hours of the morning a fire that had been lit, and Peter huddled around that fire with other people. You see, when there's a common need, we huddle around the same fire. We've been around the same fire as a world, really, for this last year. We've been looking for solutions. We've been looking for a way forward. We've been looking for, for answers to things. Luke 22, reading from verse 52 down to verse 61, it says, now this is after Jesus has been arrested. Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him, am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts and you didn't lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him sitting there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, um, she said that this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, somebody else saw him and said, you're one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. And about an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he was speaking, a rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. You will disown me three times. Around the fire that night was a gathering of wounded souls. People confused by what was happening. Maybe homeless people, people in fear, people in difficult circumstances. Why were they not in their houses? Stuff had happened to their lives. Maybe there were those who were also curiously looking to see what was going to happen with Jesus. There were servants who maybe worked in the house that had come out. They had caught, they'd created a fire. People of the night looking for a common source of warmth. Next to that fire sat Peter, whom Jesus had called into ministry. He had spoken great things over Peter's life, and he had even renamed Peter. He used to be called Simon before Jesus came. Who were you before Jesus came? 
What was your life like before Jesus came? What was your, the definition of who you are before Jesus came? Simon means listening. Peter means the rock. You see, he had gone from taking in and listening to all the information to living it out and standing on it. We can be Christ followers who are constantly receiving and constantly taking things in, but there's got to come a point when we live the declaration. There's got to come a point when we live the life that we've been learning about. We can't just be constantly tuning into services and going to church on a Sunday and receiving information. There's got to come a point where we say, I'm going to stand on this revelation. I'm going to listen to what has been said and I'm going to cause this to change my life you see Peter had stood on the bedrock of that his name had even changed and this is the man that is huddled around the fire huddling with the hopeless huddling with the homeless huddling with those that needed um, a, a savior and he held the answers but fear took over you see fear always operates opposite to faith and you're always either going to be working in faith or you're going to be working in fear. We cannot be working on both at the same time. And so they, there he was, this man of God, called by God, done great things already. He was there on the mountain of transfiguration. He had seen great things happening. He was there when Jairus' daughter had been raised from the dead. Peter was there. And he was the one that should have had the fire of God burning inside of him. And when he gathered around that fire, he was bringing his fire to the fire. When people gather around a set of circumstances, when they gather around worry, they gather around anxiety, they gather around a pandemic, may we carry our fire within us to the fire that others have gathered around so that people can have their lives impacted by what is burning inside of us. And there was Peter sitting there with all the answers. He was sitting there with the revelation that he had seen. And people are saying to him, weren't you with this Jesus? But you see the fear had taken a hold of him where he thought that they were going to do the same to him as what they were doing to Christ. We gather at fires of common fears. We gather at fires of common interest. Not only do birds of a feather flock together, but misery loves company too. And at the fire of common warmth, we become part of the crowd. We become part of the general conversation. But we need to be reminded that we did not get put on earth to blend in. We got put on earth to shine like stars against the dark background. And the darker the night, the brighter the star. The brighter the shine. And when Peter left that fire, everything in him must have longed to have that moment again. Why? Because at that fire, he denied knowing Jesus. He denied knowing him three times. And when he walked away from that fire, everything in him must have said, and he heard that rooster crow, and he'd been told that before the rooster crows, you deny knowing me three times. And he said, Jesus, I'd never do that. How many times haven't we done something that we've said, I would just simply never do that. That's just not me. You know, we can live in regret or we can take the next opportunity to put it right. And as much as Peter must have been grieving in his heart and saying, I wish I could get back to that fire and do it all over again. We have to realize that the past is the past. There was a different fire he had to get back to. He had to get back to the fire of the Holy Spirit inside of him. He had to get back to the fire of the anointing. He had to get back to the fire of the calling that was inside of him. He'd messed it up at the human fire. He had to get it right at the God fire. He couldn't go back. We can't go back and redo the things that we've done wrong in the past. What we can do is react better to them in the future. We can learn from these things and make sure that we don't repeat the same mistake. We can live in regret or we can take the next opportunity to put it right. If you're watching this today, God does not want you to walk in condemnation and guilt. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. If you're walking in condemnation, that is not something that God has put on you. It's a choice that you've made where you've chosen not to forgive yourself and to release yourself from the things of the past. God is calling you forward. We can live in regret or we can take the next opportunity to put it right. When Jesus had risen from the dead and he was standing there talking to Peter on the shores of the lake 
And he said to Peter three times in a row, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? I know I've preached on this before. And he, what was happening there was Peter was being given three opportunities to reclaim his first love once for every denial. But at that fire, Peter had the chance to make a difference. He had a chance to make a stand and he missed that chance. The fire was lit for those needing warmth, but it became a fire of judgment for Peter. It judged his own heart. The Bible, in the Bible we see fire bringing God's judgment sometimes. In 1 Corinthians 3, reading from verse 11 to 15, it says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using, using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. We're talking there about the fire of judgment. Let me tell you this right then. That fire of judgment would have been burning in Peter's heart. He would have been saying, I need another chance. I need a shot at redemption. We serve a God who is always redeeming, who is always saving, who is always regenerating our lives. And he's bringing us into wholeness in him. The fire led the lost when the pillar of fire led the Israelites through the wilderness. We see fire cleaning up a mess in Hebrews 12, 29, where it says that he is a con consuming fire that will get rid of all the stuff that does not belong. When God is allowed free reign in our lives, He starts to deal with the things that are peripheral to His purposes, outside of His purposes, and we start to experience Him in a deeper way. The fire transferred from the bush into Moses' heart when he saw the burning bush. But had the fire transferred to Peter's heart when he sat at that fire, had the fire of the reality of this moment, had it really, really hit him, did he look into the flames as we all do sometimes? And did he contemplate his decision, his motives, his grief of that night? And he hadn't even denied Jesus yet. But the master had been taken. Did he start to realize what was going on? I don't know about you, but I like to gaze at fires. <laughs> you know, you make a fire in the fireplace or at a barbecue. Um, in South Africa, we call it a braai. And you have a look. At, at, at the flames and you just stare and you find yourself getting mesmerized even by a candle just mesmerized by the flame and I can imagine Peter huddled around that fire and there were others huddled there too and he must have looked into those flames and wondered you know what, what, what was this all about when I saw Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration and I saw Moses and Elijah appearing next to him when I saw him raising the dead when I saw him walk on water and he caused me to walk on water towards him what was going on in his heart? And he's saying, yet here he's being led off to be crucified. Where is this all headed? And suddenly people turn to him and say, you were with him. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't there. The fire, he was around the fire of humanity, but the fire of God was, was somehow going, going cold inside of him with fear. Cold inside with fear. We are invited to the fire of God to gaze into the strength of those flames. Those flames will fire a passion. They will light a new vision. They will stir a hope in us. Get back to the fire of God and leave your regrets behind. Peter had an opportunity to get back to the fire, but this time it was the God fire, not the human fire. The first fire was the fire of denial for Peter. The second one was the saving grace of Jesus Christ when he declared his devotion and love for Jesus. God, take us back to the fire so that we can be redeemed, so that we can make reparations where needed and where it's wise to do so. Take us back like Peter to the place where we broke so that we can be healed. It was in that place of denial that he broke, but it was in the place of confession, of commitment, that he was made whole again. Would you confess that to Jesus today? Say, God, you know what? I've messed up. 
I've made so many mistakes. But God, today, I choose to declare your lordship over my life. You see, the fire empowered and it strengthened those same disciples. In Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, where a scared group of disciples, not quite sure what to do next, was sitting in the upper room and suddenly, like a fire, the Holy Spirit came down on them. And when we surrender to God's timing, like the disciples did then, they were told to wait, and they waited and waited for God to do something, and suddenly the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. When we surrender to God's timing, we're actually surrendering to God's plan. And when we surrender to His plan, we will reach our destination. A man that walks with God always reaches his destination. And the disciples' destination was not to be huddled up in a room, but to be out in the streets proclaiming the truth of Jesus Christ. And when that fire hit them, that's exactly what hap happened. But to get them from here to there, they had to have a fire to propel them. And the fire of the Holy Spirit fell on them and lifted them out of the fire of pondering and wondering and fear into the fire of modern society, out of the building and there into the bustling city. The fire of God's truth flowed from them as they lit a spiritual fire that still burns today in the church of the living God. Get back to that fire. Get back to the fire of love and mercy. Get back to the fire of redemption. Let God burn in your life with new strength and with a new passion. As you sit like Peter around a common fire, make a difference. Speak His truth. Shine like stars in a dark place. God is working and God is moving. Let's get back to him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the fire of God that burns in us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are being poured out on your church even now in these crisis times. We know, Heavenly Father, that we're coming into a totally different season of church and we commit that all to you. We pray for our Easter service next Sunday. We commit that to you right now in Jesus' name as we get back to the fire of fellowship together next week. I pray, Lord God, that you would presence yourself right here in this building, which stands empty as I speak. Lord Jesus, that you would fill this place. And Lord God, we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. May we sense that fire of you in our lives, in Jesus' name. Right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, can I just encourage you to give him a chance? How do you know he's real if you've never given him a chance? Would you allow him to present the evidence so that you can make an educated decision about the reality of the great God that we serve? And it just takes saying, Jesus, please come into my life. I ask you to forgive me the way I've lived my life up to now. I'm asking you to take a hold of the steering wheel of my life. I commit myself to you. And today I call myself a Christ follower. And I will start that journey today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you in person next week. God bless you. Have an absolutely amazing week. Remember our prayer time together on Wednesday night. Connect groups are happening. God bless you all.